Hey, good morning, Longleaf Church. It is so good to see you here this morning on Sunday, July the 5th. I am Jeff St. Clair, the pastor of Longleaf Church, and we welcome you to worship on this holiday weekend. I pray it's been a safe one. I pray it's been a happy one and that you are healthy and doing well here this day. Uh, we have some announcements that we'd like to make here this morning. Uh, first of all, big shout out to Colin and Adam Woodmansey, uh, owners of TFW Gym here. Uh, they have been so hospitable and they let us use this uh, facility whenever we need it. Uh, it's been humid outside, 80% chance of rain today, so we are inside and it is so wonderful to be able to be together in God's house of worship. Um, although here in the gym this morning, but it's a great day to be together, and we're just so glad that you are here with us. We ask that you take a moment to sign in. Uh, feel free to share a comment, say hello to somebody, give a shout out to someone. Uh, we love engagement online, so please put a comment down below and just uh, welcome each other. Maybe somebody you haven't heard from in a while, just reach out to them and say hi. Uh, it does the heart good whenever we see that interaction with each other on Sunday morning. We have a couple opportunities to be able to be engaged this uh, coming week in worship and also in the devotional life of the church. Every morning at 7 o'clock, I do provide uh, worship devotions. So at 7 o'clock, face, Facebook Live, come on out, walk, take some time to worship with us on Facebook Live. And then also on Wednesdays, uh, we are doing something a little bit different this coming Wednesday at 6 o'clock. Normally, we have our prayer time together, but this coming month, Pastor Will at the Mandarin Campus and myself are doing a very similar uh, worship series called Two Perspectives. We're going to be preaching on the same passage of Scripture, but bringing it from two different perspectives and letting God do the work and lead us in our preaching. And then we're going to do a Zoom call uh, live on Wednesdays at 6 o'clock where you can engage with us and share your thoughts about the message here this day. So uh, join me 6 o'clock this coming Wednesday on Facebook Live at Longleaf Church Facebook page. I would love for you to comment below this question or this thought. Tell us about a time where a prayer God answered in your life. Maybe there was something in your life that you have just been praying and praying and praying for and asking for God's guidance in that prayer request and God answered that. We're, we're going to be talking about that a little bit today, about how so often we, we face difficult life changes and how we go to God in prayer and, and how God works so beautifully in the midst of all of that. So do me a favor, comment below, tell us about a time where prayer got answered. And so uh, I have a last announcement. Chad uh, Sorensen, he's our worship lead for our traditional worship at Longleaf Church. And uh, Chad... Uh, you want to share something here this morning? Absolutely. Uh, so in the United Methodist Church, each year, uh, for each of the annual conferences, basically one per state, kind of fluctuates around a little bit, but the bishop makes appointments to each of the Methodist churches. Uh, and we already had appointment Sunday, which was the Sunday that we announced who's going to be at which church. And uh, today is the start of Jeff's eighth year down here with the Mandarin and Longleaf campuses. Uh, we couldn't be happier uh, with the fact that he's here. So, Jeff, we're so glad that you've been reappointed again for this year. And we know we hope for many, many years to come. But uh, we're so glad that you're here. And congratulations on eight years. Can eight years. It? I can't believe it. Yeah. Eight years. It seems lot. just like yesterday we were moving from Pennsylvania down here to Florida. Couldn't get over the heat of this place in July. But uh, we are so glad we are here. Love the people of Longleaf and Mandarin. And we just are looking forward to what year eight brings to our church fam. That's why we're inside in the air conditioning today? Yes. Okay, excellent. <laughs> Happy July. <laughs> yeah, amen. Thanks, Chad. Those are the announcements that we have here now. Uh, let's go to God in prayer. Gracious and loving God, bless this time of worship, wherever it is that we're worshiping from this morning. Maybe from uh, an Airbnb, maybe from our own kitchen, maybe from our living room, maybe from our back patio, wherever we find ourselves worshiping this day, O oh Lord, bring your Holy Spirit upon each and every one. For all this we pray in the precious name of Christ our Savior. Amen.
forget the man who died, who gave that right to me, that I gladly stand up next to you and defend the steel today. Cause there ain't no doubt I love this land. God bless the USA. is from the Lord. He is their stronghold in their time of trouble. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. Almighty God, continue to pour out your blessing upon us as we worship you this morning.
acoustics in here for sound is so profound. And I got goosebumps uh, hearing you sing, Chad. Thank, thanks be to God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we stand today as our forefathers have stood before you in times gone by, celebrating our history and reveling in all the great things that our country has achieved. On this day, we rejoice in the favor you have graciously given us. We thank you for the blessings of liberty for this generation and for the generations to come. We thank you for our independence, peace, and for all those who have bravely given their lives in defense of freedom and justice. We thank you that your gracious and provident hand has given us so much. Yet as a nation and people, we have not always chosen the right way. We ask you to forgive us for those times. On this day, we commit ourselves to wholeheartedly honoring and serving you. With everything that we are, we lay our lives before you. Make us a generous people, O Lord, a holy nation, a people set aside to love you forever. For the sake of the land of the brave and free and the peoples and nations of this world, today we do not presume your grace for our country. Our land is in need of you. Our people are in need of you. Our industry and business is in need of you. May we look only to you this Independence Day weekend, dependent on you. Please come now by your glorious Holy Spirit. Breathe new into the vigors of this nation. We ask all of this in the wonderful name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for all eternity. Amen. Amen. And now I'm going to invite our kids to come close to the TV. I have uh, somebody here with me this morning. And this person, or this dog, is Ralph. Hello, everybody. Hi, kids. It's so good to see you all here today. You know what, Jeff? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to make a doghouse. And, you know, it's... I'm, I'm having a little trouble here with it. it. It just won't bend. Jeff, I don't like this. Well, Ralph, why are you trying to do this all by yourself? Well, because I can do all kind of stuff by myself. And isn't that what I'm supposed to do? No, Ralph. It's, it's, it's important to, to be able to ask for help in, in times of trouble when you can't do something right. It is? Yes, Ralph, it is. You know, as a, as a Christian person, one thing that I always do is I always ask for help whenever I'm in need of help. And I usually go to God for that help because God is always with us to help us in times of trouble. God's with you all the time? Like, I don't see him anywhere. Where is he? Well, well, well Ralph, God is right here in our hearts and in our minds. Oh, really? Yeah, it's through the work of the Holy Spirit that comes alongside of us to give us the comfort and the wisdom and the direction that we need to, to be able to do the things that we can do, can't do by ourselves. Oh, really? Yeah, that, that, that's right, Ralph. And so I, I, want to, I want to invite an old friend of ours that, uh, you know, back in the day, it was a long time ago, but uh, Chad brought uh, Bernard uh, to uh, this worship service one time, and we got to meet Bernard, but it's just Chad today, so let's welcome out Chad. Okay. Hey, Chad. Hey, Ralph. How are you? Oh, I'm doing pretty good. Good. I'm just good. trying to figure out how to build a doghouse by myself, but I couldn't do it because my paws can't really hold a hammer. Hold on. Let, let's try something here. Let's go like this. Okay. And let's go like this. Oh. And maybe, oh, no, hold on. Uh, maybe we need yeah. another one. Yeah, get the other one. Yeah. Oh, wait, that's a great idea. There you go. Wait, so now if we go like this, and watch, watch this. I'm gonna go like this, and I'm gonna go like this. Ooh. How about that? That is so cool. Look at this. I have a doghouse now. Hey, that's yeah. awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Chad. Give me five. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so Jeff was telling me like when I need help with something, that I could go to God. What, yeah. what, is that true? Absolutely. You know, I've had to do that before. You know, you get through, you, you have happy times and things are going great. And then sometimes you got tough times. Like, you know, there was one time when I lost my job because, oh, because the company was closing. Yeah. 
there. And they were moving up north and, and actually up near Pittsburgh. But oh, uh, we I won't talk Pitt about that. I hear Pittsburgh's one of the most beautiful cities in the world. Uh, yes, I've heard that too. Right. Um, but uh, uh, anyway, so I, you know, all of a sudden I had to go find a new job and I didn't know what I was going to do to make money. And I prayed to God. And, and God helped me out because he said, don't worry, I've got you. So what happened? I got a new job. That's and I got a better job than the one that I had before because I asked God. You know, and, and sometimes it's something easy like that. And sometimes, you know, people get sick. Yeah. People, people die. Sometimes it's an accident. People, it's just, it, that happens. And, you know, we've got this virus that's going on and a lot of people have lost someone. Um, but, you know, I lost my son. Oh, it was, it was almost four years ago. And, and it was, a, it was a horrible, horrible time for me. But you know what got me through that? It was God. Oh, I yeah. turned to God and I prayed to God and I said, Help me get through this because I know that I can't do it by myself. And you know what? Four years later, I've gotten through that. It still hurts, but I know God's got my back. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry there, Chad. And I mean, you know, Jeff has talked about Sean before. Really loved him and uh, cared about him. Yep. And, and, and I know that, um, you know, in those tough times, and some, I just know that God has to be with you. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm so glad God has been with you through the tough times, too. Oh, I thank you. Thank you. Well, well, man, I, I, friends, this has been an awesome learning experience for me today because I got a doghouse. Yes, you did. Because Jeff came by, helped me, and, and also because I learned that I'm, I'm not alone, that I can actually have someone help me in times of need, like God. Absolutely. Well, kids, remember that. that Any time you need help, you can always turn to God and pray and tell God everything that you need and God will be there with you. I'll see you later, kids. Take care. That's like a full-fledged workout. <laughs> Whew, wow. Uh, so if, if you're in puppet ministry or something, wow, you, you deserve a raise because uh, that, that definitely puts on a sweat, even in air conditioning. So. Uh, thank you, Chad, so much for, for helping us here to get through that uh, time with Ralph here this morning. And now we go to the Lord at a time of giving thanks to God. And, and one of the things that I asked early on in this worship service was this. Uh, tell us a time where prayer was answered, that God answered the prayer that you were seeking. Uh, maybe it wasn't the way you thought it was going to happen, but God answered that prayer. So feel free to put that in the comments below. We'd love to see your responses and be able to share and celebrate with you that time that God was present in your life. It's, uh, it's been so wonderful to see ministry uh, just blossom. I've, I've seen uh, so many different things over this past week. Uh, last Sunday, Gabrielle was here with us. She was sharing about all the things that are happening in, in missions. We continue to see how God is working through our staff, through our lay people. And we are just so grateful for each and every one of you. And I thank you, Lord, for the generosity of each person that's watching here today. For, Lord, we have truly given with a grateful heart. And with that, I say thank you to each and every one of you for all that you've done to make our church family what it is here this day. You can give uh, by going to Longleaf Church, uh, dot, Longleaf Church uh, SJC, and you can... Uh, Click on the Give tab on our website. We'd love for you to give there. And also you can text to give, 77977, and just simply write the words Longleaf Church SJC, and you can walk through that. There was also a video that was produced uh, yesterday, I believe, by Allison, who's our web social media administrator. So if you don't know how to do this, she walked you through every step of how to give. So uh, go back to yesterday's video on our Longleaf Facebook page. You'll be able to click on that and she'll walk you step by step. Thanks, Allison, for doing that for us here this weekend. With a grateful heart, let's give thanks to God. Almighty God, thank you for this day and this opportunity for us to join together in worship. We just pray, O oh Lord, your blessing to be upon us as we give here this day with a grateful heart. O oh Lord, continue to multiply the gifts and continue to multiply your kingdom message as we spread it to the ends of the earth. For all this we pray in Christ's holy name. Amen. And I have a treat for you today. We have Brenda Chapman with the saxophone doing a patriotic melody. Thank you. 
confronted with a major decision or a major situation, open yourself to let faith and trust in God take the lead. Well, let me explain to you. Now, for those who have been a part of Mandarin, they, uh, some know this story, uh, but many of you who are online do not know this story about me and our family. I want to share with you the story of how we ended up coming to Florida. Eight years ago to this weekend, we had no intentions on ever coming back to Florida to live. You see, Jennifer and I lived in 1999 in West Palm Beach and said we had no desire to live in Florida again. After that first experience in South Florida, we thought that this would never be for us ever again. So we moved back closer to Pennsylvania and we lived right along the West Virginia and the Maryland border along the Potomac River. I went into ministry uh, shortly after a stint of school teaching and Jennifer went into nursing. We moved back to Pennsylvania, went to seminary, went to, uh, got some churches, served those churches. And some of you are watching here today from some of my first churches. I uh, miss you and love you and uh, just pray God's blessings upon you. And Jennifer went to nursing school and got her nursing degree and got a job working at Children's Hospital in Pittsburgh. We had a really wonderful life in Pennsylvania. Loved spending it with family and friends. I was close enough to mom and dad that I could just jump in the car, go down on my day off and help them out. Our kids grew up knowing their cousins they knew the rolling hills, the rivers, and the culture of western Pennsylvania. We loved our homeland. In 2012, we began to notice that our son Aaron was chronically coming down with pneumonia. It would come and go, on average, three to four times every winter. And one particular time, Following a CAT scan, it was revealed that Aaron had scarring on his lungs from the constant battle that he had every single winter with pneumonia. Now, we were at a loss. Aaron was being treated at the time by the chief of pulmonology at Children's Hospital in Pittsburgh. He was tested for cystic fibrosis, but that came back negative. He had been treated for asthma for six years, but he never had asthma. He had been tested for every single allergy out there known to humanity, and that all came back negative. We had no idea what was wrong with our son. And then in the fall of 2012, we took a vacation to Puerto Rico. Now the night before the trip, our son Aaron got sick, and we still went ahead with the plans since we knew the routine. We had a script for the antibiotics, and we knew that Aaron would get sick with a cold, he would develop pneumonia, we'd have the antibiotics, he'd be cared for. Now, as we look back, maybe it wasn't the best decision to go, but God was right there in the midst of that vacation. While we were in Puerto Rico, Jen, my wife, who is a registered nurse, said, do you notice that Aaron is not sick anymore? He got better in one day of being in the tropics. So my researching wife spent that vacation researching respiratory disorders with climate and came across a very rare disorder. So we took this disorder back to the chief of pulmonology in Pittsburgh and we presented him with our findings. Now he spent over two hours in the office with us that day researching uh, this disorder on the computer. And his comment to us was this, I don't think that your son has this. We only know of 800 cases at this time and we don't even know what it is that we're looking for. So in the months to follow, Aaron, our son, spent in quarantine seven months at home. And he did not leave the house because we knew in our hearts that the cold weather and the dry weather of the winter had terrible effects on his breathing. 
Tissue samples were taken, sent to the National Institute of Health, Seattle Children's Hospital, and we waited, and we waited, and we waited for over nine months. During this time of quarantine for Aaron, we had major decisions to make. If we said yes to moving to a climate that was hot and humid, it's not hot and humid here, is it, guys? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, a little bit. We had major decisions to make in our work life, in our family life. You know, we were both heavily invested in our work life. I was invested in the Western Pennsylvania Conference, serving on the Board of Ordained Ministry, the New Church Starts Committee, and even had the opportunity to preach at annual conference. That move would have come at a, at a pretty significant loss in my career. Jennifer was a nurse at Children's Hospital in Pittsburgh, and she had a very good amount of time invested there. Plus, all of our family was from Western Pennsylvania. Secondly, we didn't have any answers yet. Do we go out in faith or in, with our gut? Or do we wait for that answer that may never come? And although we were scared, although we were very fearful, we asked ourselves daily, what if we're making the wrong decision to walk on faith and trust and not based on science and medicine? There were a lot of decisions during that quarantine time for Aaron. As I reflect upon scripture here today, I see that there are many times that we are confronted with situations where we have to make decisions and they're not easy decisions to make because we do not know what the outcome might be. You know, those moments of monumental decisions may be filled with great fear. It may be filled with a, a great amount of uncertainty and an unknowing of what the future may hold for us. And as we move into the uncertainty of life, handing our concerns over to God and releasing our control is essential in finding peace. Today we're going to go back all the way to the Old Testament, to the beginning of the Bible, to Genesis chapter 7 and 8. And Noah, building this ark for a very long time, he could have given up at any time along the way. However, Noah didn't give up. Noah persevered the countless times of exhaustion in order to come out much stronger. You see, Noah experienced the blessing of being faithful and obedient to God's leading. So if you have your Bibles this morning, uh, maybe you have it next to you on the coffee table, maybe you have it on the kitchen table, I'd love for you to follow along with me in the moment in the building of and getting in the ark. This is Genesis chapter 7, verse 13. And we're going to read through verse 22. It's a, it's a relatively lengthy read here today. But I want you to see the picture of what's taking place here after the ark was built. On that very day, Noah and his sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, together with his wife and the wives of his three sons, entered the ark. They all, they had with them every wild animal according to its kind, all livestock according to their kinds, every creature that moves along the ground according to its kind, and every bird according to its kind, everything with wings. Pairs of all creatures that have the breath of life in them came to Noah and entered the ark. The animals going in were male and female of every living thing as God had commanded Noah. Then the Lord shut him down in. We're going to go back to that. Then the Lord shut him in. For 40 days the flood kept coming on the earth, and as the waters increased, they lifted the ark high above the earth. The waters rose and increased greatly on the earth. 
and the ark floated on the surface of the water. They rose greatly on the earth, and all the high mountains under the entire heavens were covered. The waters rose and covered the mountains to a depth of more than 15 cubits. Every living thing that moved on land perished. Birds, livestock, wild animals, all the creatures that swarm over the earth and all of mankind. Everything on dry land that had the breath of life in its nostrils died. Every living thing on the face of the earth was wiped out. People and animals and the creatures that move along the ground and the birds were wiped from the earth. Only Noah was left and those with him in the ark. The waters flooded the earth for a hundred and fifty days. But God remembered Noah and all the wild animals and the livestock that were with him in the ark. And he sent a wind over the earth and the waters receded. Now the springs of the deep and the floodgates of the heaven had been closed and the rain had stopped falling from the sky. The water receded steadily from the earth. At the end of the 150 days, the water had gone down. And on the 17th day of the seventh month, the ark came to rest. On the mountains of Ararat. The waters continued to recede until the tenth month, and on the first day of the tenth month, the tops of the mountains became visible. After forty days, Noah opened a window he had made in the ark and sent out a raven, and it kept flying back and forth until the water had dried up from the earth. And then he sent out a dove to see if the water had receded from the surface of the ground. But the dove could not, could find nowhere to perch because there was water all over the surface of the earth. So it returned to Noah in the ark. He reached out his hand and took the dove and brought it back to himself in the ark. He waited seven more days and again sent the dove from the ark. When the dove returned to him in the evening, there in its beak was a freshly plucked olive leaf. Then Noah knew that the water had receded. On the earth. He waited seven more days and sent the dove out again, but this time it did not return to him. By the first day of the month, Noah's six hundred and first year, the water had dried up from the earth. Noah then removed the covering from the ark and saw that the surface of the ground was dry. By the twenty-seventh day of the second month, the earth was completely dry. Then God said to Noah, Come out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and their wives. Bring out every kind of living creature that is with you, the birds, the animals, all the creatures that move along the ground so they can multiply on the earth and be fruitful and increase in number on it. So Noah came out together with his sons and his wives and his sons' wives. All the animals and all the creatures that move along the ground and all the birds Everything that moves on land came out of the ark, one kind after another. Then Noah built an ark altar to the Lord, and taking some of all the clean animals and clean birds, he sacrificed burnt offerings on it. The Lord smelled the pleasing aroma and said in his heart, Never again will I curse the ground because of humans, even though every inclination of the human heart is evil from childhood. Never again will I destroy all living creatures as I have done. As long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night will never cease. And a part of me wonders why in the world did God keep mosquitoes? I still wonder that. But I want you to picture this with me. Noah just spent a huge chunk of his life building this ark. Blood, sweat, tears, they all went into this building of this giant ark. And now he and his family get on the boat with all those animals. And the doors shut. The doors shut. I imagine with me what is going through the mind of Noah at this moment. 
He may be thinking to himself, was this all for nothing? Did I make the right decisions? Were all those people who mocked at me for all that time right? What impact does this have on my family by being stuck on a boat? How will my family fare during this time on the ark? All of these questions had to be gone through Noah's mind. You know, the, the building of an ark is a major decision. And that decision to get on the boat and to follow God in the midst of this, not knowing the outcome, had to be a much greater decision. There was no going back to this decision to walk by faith and trust. Here is Noah following the lead of God and trusting in him. Imagine it with me, sitting on the ark, and you're hearing the rain hit the roof as you're sitting there. The waves are, are rushing and they're probably beating up against the side of the boat. The sounds of the animals roaring and hissing and making all kinds of other noises in their spots. And perhaps even maybe some of the creaks of the wood as you hear the boat rocking and as the family gathers together, distancing themselves from the storm that's outside. These are the sounds that go through Noah's ears for the days and for the weeks and for the months in the ark. You see, Noah's time in quarantine on the ark, it was, a, it was an act of faith. And right now, each one of us, we have found ourselves in some form or another of some type of quarantine. And this has been a difficult adjustment for us. And you, just like me, might be thinking to ourselves, what does this mean for me and my faith walk? What does this mean in my spiritual life? Thankfully, we can look to Noah. We can see how Noah reacted during this time of quarantine. He and his family had to live on this ark for a year in a wooden box while there was so much chaos going on on the outside. And they wrestled with the struggles that we face here today. I get bored sometimes sitting around the house. Sandy and I were talking about just tending to the yard, and that's about all we can do. We talk about loneliness. We talk about fear and anxiety during the entire time the storm lasts. And from Noah, we can see that living our faith out is still very possible during these times. And I will say that faith is not always going to be unicorns skittles and happiness sometimes living a life of faith means doing the right next thing by taking care of what god has already given you in your midst and for noah that meant over a year of tending to his family of tending to himself and caring for the animals on the ark and for you, it might mean doing the same exact thing. It might mean caring for your family. It might mean taking care of yourself, practicing good self-care. It might mean playing with your pets a little bit more and your house. We like to do the big new things, but we often forget that God desires for us to maintain the things that we've been blessed with. You know, in storms, so often time can be our biggest enemy. I am so sure that Noah and his family were sick of the rain after a week of being on that boat. And 
I know for us Floridians, we get sick if it rains in a nor'easter for three days. Everyone posts on Facebook, oh my goodness, the sun is out. It's amazing the thought that we have after just three days of rain. So imagine how Noah felt of raining constantly and constantly. You see, it's in the storms where our faith is really brought out. You see, Mo, or, or Noah and his family got through continuing to focus on the work of maintaining what God had given them. And through hope, thinking that things would improve. And Noah made a habit after the storms and the rains had stopped by sending a bird out to see if the water was going down. And what this shows me is that Noah continued to trust in God, that the waters would recede eventually, and that this would not go on forever. And this season that we're in right now, as it stretches on, remember that it won't be forever, and that we can continue to hope in God. That God is at work continuously through this storm in our lives. Last Saturday, the owners of this gym here at TFW, Adam and Colin, and the businesses of this plaza here in Bartram Oaks Walk, they rallied together to help a local business in need. And this is a business that Longleaf has helped before. At the beginning of the pandemic, we did gift cards and for our first responders there to help support local business. And this owner of this local business continued to walk in faith and stayed the course without giving up. The quarantine, you might say the quarantine, pushed these businesses around her to rally around her and to care for the ark. Last Saturday, thousands of dollars were raised so that the Belgian Waffle House could keep pushing forward. I'm reminded of the words of Psalm 56, verse 3. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you. When you find yourselves afraid and the rains that are coming your way, I invite you to put your trust in God. We are constantly reminded in the word to put our trust in the Lord. Psalm 62 verse 8 says this, Trust in him at all times, you people. Pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. Hmm. Trust in him at all times. Times. Not when it's convenient or not when you want, but trust in God at all times, for God is our refuge. My wife Jennifer and I and the kids, as you heard earlier in the worship service, are now in our eighth year in Florida. And we're happy and we're joyful to share the news that our son Aaron never Get this, never got pneumonia since moving to Florida. Our son experienced a complete healing. And for one who was trained in New Church Starts in Western Pennsylvania, I kind of gave up on that dream of launching new churches. And the Lord led our way an opportunity to launch a new church. And our family of five has been able to experience so many blessings beyond belief. So as we come to a close this day, I want to ask you this. And feel free to comment below. What are some ways that you can trust in God during this long season on the ark? So feel free to answer that. What are some ways that you can trust in God during this long season on the ark? 
And I also want to ask you this as we're challenged for the week. How will you find ways to care for the ark? How will you find ways to care for your people? How will you find ways to care for your own self? How will you find ways to care for the community around you while you're on this ark? I think God Noah stuck it out. I thank God my family stuck it out. And I thank God that you are going to stick it out too. When we're confronted with a major decision or a major situation, open yourself to let faith and trust in God take the lead. Amen? this morning and for giving us the, the peace of Christ in our hearts. You know, before I come to a close of our benediction, I want to ask for you to do me a favor. Uh, if you have felt God's presence in this worship time together this day, just simply click the share tab and tell people why uh, they need to watch it here today. Uh, because uh, we really feel that you know, even in the midst of all that we're facing, God is with us through the storms of life. And that this too shall pass, and we'll be able to move on and move forward. And so do me a favor, share this with your friends. Tell them why uh, you worship with us at Longleaf Church this day. Go now and live before God in openness and integrity. Set your minds on the way of God, not clinging to your own life, but taking up your cross and following Jesus. And may God give you a share of the eternal covenant. May Christ Jesus be proud of you when he comes in glory. And may the Holy Spirit make you grow strong in faith and lead you in the ways of righteousness. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Have a blessed week, church.